الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ربي زدني علما قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وتعاونوا على البر والتقوى ولا تعاونوا على الإثم والعدوان واتقوا الله إن الله الشديد العقاب صدق الله العظيم إن نس آية Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Ma'idah, ayah number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the believers ta'awan, cooperate with it, each other in the matters of goodness and do not cooperate with each other in the matters of badness. So the word cooperate is being used over here. A lot of us has a definition of cooperate like however we understand it. We create our own boundaries and we don't look beyond those boundaries. Now today, I would like to bring some of the ahadith which gives you another angle of cooperate. The first one is a muttafaqun alayh. It's reported by both Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim. Abi Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates it. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-imanu, the faith. Bid'un, it has branches. How many? More than 70. Fa'afdaluha, the best of all the branches is your belief system. La ilaha illallah. There is no God to be worshipped but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the best branch. And the most smallest, lowest level branches, wa adnaha, imaatatul adha al tariq. Taking out a hurdle from the way said that somebody coming after you will not going to be bothered by it. So going out of your way to help somebody, you have avoided it. But somebody else might not be able to avoid it and they may just run into it. Somebody may run into a problem, so you go and take the problem away from their life. Not just on the route, from their life. Giving a good advice, telling somebody to be beware of the problem. You know when you younger siblings are growing up, the older siblings tell them, do this, don't do that. So this is they're taking hurdles out of, out of their way. They don't want them to learn the wrong way. They don't want them to learn the hard way. Like a father to the kids. Kids sometimes don't realize that their parents are trying to save them from falling in that pit. Which they have fallen themselves or have seen other people fall into it. So this is their way of giving you a branch of their faith. is to protect the other being from falling into the trap that somebody else fell into. A lot of the people don't take advice. That's another problem. They are too full of themselves or egoistic. They don't take advice. They have to go through the whole process again to learn. That's the worst thing that you can do to yourself. Take somebody else's advice and follow it for your own betterment. Now, the other aspect of this hadith is Al-Haya Shu'batun min al-Iman one of the branches of the iman is being shy in respect. Not being shy that you lack confidence. Have haya, have little shyness in respect. Now when we talk about this shyness in respect, somebody has something. It is theirs. We have no, we have no right over it. So feel shyness that I don't have right over this. It belongs to somebody else. So respect that thing. What does that mean, respected it? Don't bother with that thing. Don't mess that thing up. It's theirs. Have some haya for something that belongs to others. Haya for something that you have. If you have something, don't spoil it. Don't wreck it. So haya maintains harmony in the society. When you have haya, it maintains respect in the society. You're not looking at other women out of respect. How can I look at somebody else's wife, somebody else's sister, somebody else's daughter? No, I can't do that. Respect. I cannot look at somebody else's property and start planning how can I ruin it up. No, it's theirs. So don't take evil pleasures in life. Even the pleasures should be streamlined in the right direction. The problem is we live in an age that it becomes so hard to have haya. 
You open a TV, you go into the social media, you walk into the school building, you go into the college, you go into a workplace. So the challenge is greater. But remember, if you come out of this, you are going to be rewarded in a greater fashion too. When the challenges are great, the rewards are great. The challenges faced by companions of the Prophet Muhammad were in their setup. The challenges faced by their students, the tabi'in, was in their setup. Taba tabi'in was in their setup. The people after in their setup. Our parents, they had their own setup. They had their own challenges. We had our own challenges. Our kids will have our own, their own challenges. So challenges will keep changing. The believer is that he goes through the challenges and succeeds. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ The one who believes, he strives for success. He doesn't get sidelined by all of these attractions. There are attractions in the world. It is created as a test. لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا It is created so that when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will ask you, what did you do when I give you this test? Were you deceived by it? Because that's what the job of the shaitan is, that he sits on the route and starts deceiving people from the right path. Those who listens to him, on the day of judgment, he will say, Inni bariyun. I have nothing to do with it. I just told them to do it and they did it. I didn't force them to do it. They did it. I just showed them the route. So when he shows the route to fight back and not listen to him, he will come back stronger. I'm telling you, he will come back stronger. That's what he does. Every time you crush him, he goes back, he goes on defensive, only for a little while, and he waits till you are weak, and then he attacks. And this attack is harder than the first one. It pushes you even farther away from where you are spiritually. That's what you have to look for. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, these are khutuwat shaitan He has this whole trap. So that is why it is important for us to maintain the haya. Haya, not in just the eyes. Haya of ears. Don't listen to filth. I know a lot of people, as soon as they sit in their car, they turn on the music channel and they listen to filth. Cusses. Coming through all these sounds. It's all that's going in here. It's all getting recorded. And they say, oh, it's music. But that's what you're training your brain. So, so what you train your brain on are the kind of things that are going to play. Do not speak anything bad. I've seen people that hold on to their tongues very, very hard in Ramadan, but as soon as it's over, they're back to their norm. No, haya in speech, haya in hearing, haya in eyes, haya in hearts. Haya in hearts, because this is so bad. These are inside diseases. Hasad, grudges, ill feelings, hatred, animosity, because the hearts are not pure. So all of these will maintain positivity in the society. That's why haya is very, very important. We have a story of Yusuf alayhi salam in front of us. That a woman of the house deceived Yusuf. And he wanted Yusuf alayhi salam to commit adultery with her. And she made all possibilities. She closed the doors of the house. She locked doors. And then she said, Come on! And he said, No. I'm not going to come. Because I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have haya in me. I will not be deceived by you. And then she tried her level best. He ran away. This way when she tried to grab him, his shirt from the back tore. And when they reached the door, there was her husband, Aziz of Misr. And then she turned 180 degrees and she said, Aziz, look at this guy. He's trying to go after me. And Yusuf said, no, no, he. And Yusuf said, no, no, he arawadat me. She is the one who was after me. I didn't go after her. And then there was a little boy. 
Some people say the boy was not even at the speaking age and it was a miracle that the boy said, or somebody else said, look at how this kameez, the shirt is torn. If it is torn from the front, that means Yusuf was attacking and the woman was trying to protect herself. If the Yusuf's shirt is torn from the back, that means he was running away and she was pulling him. And when they looked at it, the shirt was torn from the back. And the guy said, إِنَّهُ مِنْ كَيْدِكُنْ This is your plot, O woman. This is your plot. فَعَرَدَ عَنْهَا Yusuf let it go. But when this news became known to the people, the other wives and the women in the society, it shows us how society was. The woman didn't start talking that the wife of the Aziz is after a guy. He said, no, no, no. After a guy is okay. But after a slave? فَلَمَّا سَمِعَتْ بِمَكْرِهِنَّ أَرْسَلَتْ إِلَيْهِنَّ So when she came to know about this, that they're talking about her being getting involved with a slave boy, she sent them invitation. Wow. This is the society we're talking about. Morally corrupt. No sense of hayat. Come, and I want you to see what I fell in love with. Open invitation, bank way, set up. وَعَتَدْ لَهُنَّ مُتَّكَعٌ وَآتَتْ كُلَّ وَاحِدٍ مِّنْهُنَّ سِكِينَةٌ And gave each one of them a knife to cut the fruits, a very lavish banquet. And then she ordered Yusuf, أَخْرُجْ عَلَيْهِنَّ Come in front of these women. When he walked in front of these women, they saw him. He's nobleman. He's pious. And the people are innocent. It shows these are innocent souls. So when they looked at him, When they looked at him, they cast their glaze on him. They were like, oh my God. That's beauty. That is wow. And at that moment, they cut their hands in which they were cutting the fruits instead of cutting the fruits. And then they said, وَقُلْنَ حَاشَ لِلَّهِ مَا هَذَا بَشَرًا He's so noble. He's so pure. He's so pious. He has to be out of this world. مَا هَذَا بَشَرًا What kind of human is he? إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا مَلَكٌ كَرِيبٍ Angel. Now angels, nobody has seen. Angels are never a point of beauty. It doesn't matter what Hollywood paints. Nobody's seen them. How do you know how they look like? Angels are a point of piety. Angels are a point of piousness. Because they don't have desires to commit sins. They only have desires of obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they said, إِلَّا مَلَكٌ Karim. He has to be a noble angel. Then Yusuf alayhi salam is in front of all these people. And the woman of the Aziz says that if he doesn't fulfill my desires, I will going to put him in jail. Something he didn't do. He didn't do anything wrong. But he will be imprisoned for not doing wrong. وَلَا إِلَّا فَعَلْ مَا أَمْأَمُرُهُ لَيُسْجَنَنَّ وَلَا يَكُونَ مِّنَ الصَّاغِرِينَ And then he will be degraded. First of all, he's a slave. Slaves have different laws and a free man. And when he's in prison, who's going to take him out? Who will going to take him out? He's a slave. People forget about slaves. So if I can't get a hold of this beauty, nobody will. That's her thought process. And then Yusuf alayhi salam says, Ya Rabb, O my Lord, As-sijnu ahabbu ilayya mimma yad'oonani ilayhi. I am better off going to a prison than doing what they are asking me to do. They're asking me to go in the act of adultery and breaking the trust. How can I do that? By all means is against the human morals. By all means is against the human morals. I am better off rotting in the prison than doing this hideous crime and living like a free man. And that's exactly what happened. 
He was thrown in the prison and forgotten. Forgotten for years. When the right time came, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him out and put him on the throne next to the king. And it was his special talent. That's why I said, we all have talents. We need to explore our talents and channel them, streamline them to the benefit. Not to earn money. Money comes. If you just keep thinking about money, you will de- get demotivated when money stops coming. Money comes. It is the goal that should be your focus. But have a goal in your life. I want to do this. And stick with it. Stick with it. He said, no, no, no. I would like to stick with it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped him out. كَذَلِكَ نَجْزِلْ This is how we give the reward to those people who are noble, those who are pious. So he was given the special talent of interpreting dreams. So when the, when the king saw a dream, he not only interpreted it, but he also gave the solution for it. So then king asked him, why don't you come and work for me? Because nobody can understand this matter more than you do. He said, I will not going to come out until I'm cleared of the accusation that was put against me and I was an innocent soul. So bring up those women, that's all he said. What is the matter of those women? Of course, then the investigation opened up, the women came, and they, and they all confessed that yet we were wrong. And even the wife of the Aziz came after all these years and said, yes, it was I who did it, and he's a free man. He didn't do anything. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected Joseph and also gave him the reward in this life. And of course, life hereafter. So doing sins is a small getaway. But after that, in the end, that's exactly what you should be looking for. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a goal. The whole point of a goal is we have our focus on the goal. When you have a focus on the goal, you don't get sidelined by these things. When these things start bothering you, you start looking at your goal. What is my goal? My goal is the third ayah of Surah Al-Fatiha, Maliki Yawmiddin. That's goal. One day I have to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I have to, why did you do this and why did you do that? I have to answer. If I do this act, how will I answer? So believer's goal is that my Lord created me. Everything I have is His. So how can I misuse it? I must have haya on the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me. And these are from the alamat, from the signs of a believer, as reported by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim, muttafaqun alayh. Abdullah ibn Amr radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he's the son of Amr ibn al-As, he's the companion of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He narrates that inna rajulan sa'ala al-nabi, a man came to the Prophet and asked, ayyu al-muslimin khayrun among the people who are believers who are the best? And the Prophet said, man salima al-muslimun min lisanihi wa salima al-muslimun min lisanihi wa yadihi the one from whom the others are protected by his tongue and by his hand so he doesn't hurt anybody physically he doesn't hurt anybody verbally emotionally he is a good person in the society Another hadith, this is reported by Imam Tirmizi and Imam Nisa'i. An Abi Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal, this is narrated by Abi Huraira. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Muslimu man salima al-Muslimun min lisanihi wa yadihi. And the Muslim is the one from whom others are saved from his hand and his tongue, evil of his hand and evil of his tongue. And then on top of that, وَالْمُؤْمِنُ مَنْ أَمِنَهُ النَّاسِ and the, and the mu'min is the one from here, from that individual, all people, all people, and nas, عَلَى دِمَائِهِمْ وَأَمْوَالِهِمْ They feel safe 
about their lives and about their belongings. They feel safe with this individual. That's what a Muslim is. He has haya. He's the guy who goes out of his way. Or she's the person who goes out of her way to take the hurdles out of other people's life. Not put hurdles in their life. So those are some of the things that I wanted to bring to you to ponder over, to think about it, that how we as individuals can make a difference in our life, in the life of our family, in the life of our relatives. Of course, the people closer to us have more rights. Now we have seen people who give so much to others but have no time for their own family or individuals that are closer to them. Those that deprive their own belongings or kinsmen, but help people. Those who don't tell anything to their dad, but love to talk to their friends. Or the dads who don't communicate with their kids, but hang out with their friends all the time. What's going on here? Certainly it's not a balance in life. So we have to look back how we can inject the relationships back in the society and keep them positive. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم.